Very good. Well, it's the top of the hour. I'm Dia Wagesbeck in Houston, and I'd like to welcome everyone to today's GlomCon seminar. Today, our talk is a clinical pathological approach to differentiating primary, secondary, and genetic FSGS. Our speaker today is Dr. Fernando Fervenza. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to come and discuss about um, uh, FSGS. It is a subject uh, quite dear to me and uh, colleagues of mine who have been, we have been working on this for a few years. And I hope that I uh, could uh, convince you or uh, at the end of the talk that um, FSGS is uh, just a lesion. And, uh, and what we need to differentiate uh, if it's primary, suppose or uh, presume primary FSGS, second FSCS or genetic FSCS is a clinical pathological approach. And to convince you that there is not such a thing as biopsy proving primary FSCS, this is, um, it doesn't, doesn't exist. It's impossible to say that. So here are uh, my disclosures. Um, and the first um, thing that I would like to say is that is what I said, is that focal segment sclerosis is a histological pattern of injury. It is defined by this light microscopy appearance. It is not a specific disease entity. And it can result from a wide variety of pathological process. Uh, it is very heterogeneous by light microscopy. And the electron microscopy, in my views, is a basic, uh, absolute requirement for a full evaluation of the disease. Remember, if you have a patient that has ankle associated vasculitis, for example, and this patient is treated um, and uh, you biopsy and he has a focal necrotizing uh, glomerulonephritis, you treat him with steroids, rituximab, et cetera. A year later, this patient uh, is in remission. His creatinine, let's say, is 1.2. You proteinuria is now 300, 400 milligrams. You biopsy him. What he is going to find is a scar of that uh, necrotizing lesion, he will have a FSGS lesion. But that doesn't mean that he's talking about that the patient has what we try to say as a primary FSGS, right? So he has a scar lesion similar. If we biopsy kidneys of patients who are 85 years old, for example, it's likely that some glomeruli will have a scar, they will have a FSGS lesion. But you should have uh, differentiated that this is not what uh, a lot of people are concerned with this, this patient that come to clinic and we end to know, should we immunosuppress this patient or not? Because we believe this patient may have primary uh, FSGS. So to begin with, the term FSGS um, is not quite correct. Um, if you see this, uh, this slide, for example, it shows here that where does the term FSGS come from? And it comes from doing a biopsy, and then let's say you have this slide, you have five glomeruli, and you can see that you have three, uh, one glomeruli that is good and another glomeruli that is good. But this glomeruli one has a scar, and this maybe one has already something here. So you say, oh, it's a focal, because um, the, not all glomeruli are involved. Um, uh, um, and it's only a segment that is involved. And that way we come from the concept of focal segment sclerosis. And I think I'm going to try to convince you in a few minutes that this the term that we keep using is not correct. Um, now, for didactical um, uh, purposes, this is a, a paper that we wrote a few years ago, a review. And we differentiate at that time causes of FSCS as either being primary, that we presume are due to a circulating podocyte toxic factor that still we have not identified. And in fact, it's likely that to be more than one of these uh, factors, uh, like we have in members of the property that we now have several uh, uh, antibodies that cause members of the property, it's not just due to PLA2R. And then we have causes that uh, uh, sec FSGS that is secondary to things like maladaptive patient that is born with one kidney or renal dysplasia or low birth weight 
or the patient who have abnormal morbid, morbid obesity or they have sickle cell.